Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So I, today I kind of want to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're in the back of my unit, and I kind of want to go over some of the equipment and meds and everything that we use, and kind of different layout than it's on a normal ambulance. So uh, I figured, yeah, let's try this out, see uh, maybe you guys appreciate it. So first thing I kind of want to go over is something that every paramedic uses in the field. <sighs> the monitor. So this is a monitor defibrillator. It's a Life Pack 15, uh, pretty common used uh, among the field. Uh, you're gonna do your blood pressures on here, non-invasive. You're gonna have your pulse ox, your capnography, um, heart rate, cardiac monitoring, defib, cardioverting, pacing, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so that's pretty standard for most um, units. The only thing that's different for ours is we actually have these outlets right here and these two outlets that we have that are marked P1 and P2 um, they allow us to either do invasive blood pressures which is called uh, arterial line monitoring so uh, we're able to get uh, real-time blood pressures on our patients uh, which is incredibly important when we are uh, actively treating a, a blood pressure whether it be for sepsis whether it be for brain bleeds whatever it might be so it comes in really handy for those reasons and speaking of brain bleeds, we also are able to do intracranial uh, pressure monitoring. Uh, so we're able to do that as well, that we hook them up to their EVD or whatever they might be on, and we're able to actively see what their uh, ICP is at the time. So that's kind of what we do with our monitor. Now, as you can imagine, we give a lot of medications on these trucks. And while some of them are boluses, a lot of them happen to be on med pumps. So uh, we use plumb set pumps is what they're called. Um, these are mainly made for in hospital, um, but we do use them on the transport side as of right now. The good thing about these is a lot of the meds are pre-programmed in here. So it's a lot, a lot easier for us to navigate. And we also are able to run two medications at one time off of one pump. So that comes in really handy when you have multiple meds. Um, we do carry three of these on the unit. For a total of six meds running at any time um, you know that could be medications it can be blood it can be whatever um, so we're able to do that um, unfortunately sometimes patients need more we gotta you know make do with that whether it's you know taking medications off that don't that aren't necessarily necessary necessarily needed at the time um, or you know we might have to borrow pumps whatever it might be but typically we get away with uh, you know, having a, a total of six meds uh, necessary on any patient. Um, so that's what these are. Uh, obviously for transport reasons, they do have smaller, vent, uh, smaller med pumps. I've had the ones that have three channels and they're you know, half the size. Uh, they're great. Uh, we don't have them yet, but this is what we use and um, uh, it works out well for us right now. Um, Something that a lot of paramedics don't learn much in school um, is lab work. And that's because in the pre-hospital field, you don't really pull labs. Um, well, on our units, we do pull labs. Uh, this is called EPOC. So we use this, and um, you might have heard of iStats or whatever. It's pretty much the same thing. The only thing different is they can pull tropes on those. Uh, we typically don't uh, have too much concern for that. Um, so that's what we use this for. We're able to, you know, uh, to pull, pull lab values on somebody. And if it's a long distance transport, we might be, you know, trying to make a little bit of changes there. Or if we're, you know, if this is a respiratory patient, maybe we're trying to find out uh, if they're acidotic and what we can do about that. So it's pretty cool that we're able to do that as well. And uh, one thing that obviously also defines critical care is being able to use a ventilator. So this is what we typically, this is what we use. Uh, this is a Hamilton T1. Uh, this is probably the Bentley events uh, that you're gonna find for the transport teams. Um, it's, a, it's an expensive one, but my goodness, is this thing worth it? Um, this has so many modes and different, uh, different things you can do with it. Um, we just pop it on. As you can see, it has a little bear there. That means it does neonate as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, but um, yeah, so I mean, when you're 
breathing for a patient. There's a lot of ways to do that, a lot of different therapies. And um, this one, while it's mainly a pressure vent, uh, it also is able to do volume. It's able to do uh, non-invasives. Um, it's able to do APRV mode. Um, a lot of things that uh, most, most vents aren't able to do. Uh, this guy is able to do all of it. So, as you can see, lots of different options there. Um, and it also has an intelligent mode, which I think is for the non-intelligent, but that's just my opinion. Um, it essentially adapts to whatever the patient's currently doing. Um, as well, it's been uh, kind of perceived to us. Um, I believe that if you're using a ventilator, you should be able to use any of the other modes. Um, my opinion. So, at any rate, there's quite a few things that you can do with this. Um, I like this vent a lot better than anything else I've used in the past. So, that's the vent and that's a lot of the equipment that we use. Obviously, we have all the standard like portable suctions and, you know, whatever else you would have on a unit. Um, that's kind of the bigger equipment based things that we have. Um, as far as medications are concerned, um, this is kind of a picture of everything that's on uh, a standard ALS unit. Um, and this is a picture of everything that is on a critical care unit. Um, as you can see, there's more medications. Um, a lot of these are vasoactive medications, whether we're treating blood pressures or whatever it might be, um, whether it's to go up or down. Uh, some, of these, uh, some of these meds can be very, very uh, good and very bad for a patient. So you have to know what you're doing uh, in order to be using them. Uh, henceforth why that other education typically comes into mind um, you know when you're when you're dealing with these patients on these transports so that's kind of the the rough estimate there if you have any questions about the medications or whatever um, feel feel free to comment ask questions whatever I'm happy to answer any questions you might have to the best of my ability um, another thing kind of let's kind of sweep around the truck and we'll see kind of what we have and uh, how it's a little bit different than most ambulances. Now, in 911 settings, you're going to have a big airway and a big trauma area. That's typically the biggest things because that's what you run. Um, well, in our, our, our situations, we don't typically run scene calls, so we don't have very much for trauma. As you can see, we kind of keep that to a little area, uh, kind of the state-mandated stuff that we have to have on the truck to be an ambulance, but we don't use it every day, so we don't put it in an area that we necessarily need it right now. Um, as you can see, we have a vast majority of fluids. Uh, that is kind of important for us um, as we do mix a lot of different medications and we might not want to give saline to somebody, we might want to give them laxative ringers or whatever it might be. So that is why that is, uh, that's kind of why everything's set up this way. As we move over to the airway cabinet, um, that looks, you know, pretty normal for any, any, you know, um, any sort of um, ambulance that you get onto. Uh, normal oxygen delivery systems, um, humidified oxygen, um, suction, that kind of stuff. Very normal. Um, and then as you can see, we have an area for our ventilator cabinets, you know, to keep all of our circuits and everything and miscellaneous stuff otherwise. So that's kind of like the broad in, uh, genre of what we have going on in the store. Uh, as you can see, like an IV drawer and where we keep our meds. Um, so everything kind of has its purpose and its place in the truck. Um, and it, it's set up for us for success. That way, when we are treating our patients, whether it be the most simple or the ones that we have to be the most aggressive on, uh, it's set up in a way that makes sense for us and that we're able to treat our patients properly. Um, the last thing I kind of want to show you guys um, is what our scene bags look like. So for your scenes, your, your the ALS 911 scene, it's going to be what you need on the scene of a call, in a house, on, a, on the side of a road, um, in a business, that kind of stuff It makes sense for you guys. Um, that stuff doesn't make sense for us because if we're in a, in a hospital, um, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about too much of the trauma or whatever it might be, right? Um, if anything, they typically have that in the room. So we can, you know, kind of work with it as we need to. Uh, but as far as our scene bag is concerned. Oof. 
it's a little bit different. In the top is where we keep our quick trachs and our surgical trach kits. On the side compartments is where we keep our fluids. This right here is our Easy I.O. Keep a little drill here with all the little kits, everything that you need. Basically, it's kind of like a throw bag, you know, uh, if we're in the room and we're all kind of doing a job, somebody can just grab the bag and make it easy. Down here, we have our arterial line monitoring cables, fluids, everything you need to start the A-line, as well as the handy dandy flebostatic clip that never works. Got a tegadermit. Doesn't work otherwise, at least not in my, not, not in my, uh, my experience. So other than that, guys, I mean, inside, inside it, you're going to find your LMAs. You're going to find an extra circuit. You're going to find BiPAP masks. Uh, we have a full intubation kit here that we're able to use. A couple quick oxygen delivery systems. Um, and then we also have the McGrath, which is a video laryngoscope. Very, very handy, very useful. First time I've used it, I was like, my goodness, what have I been missing? So, and then your, um, your uh, spinal needle with your um, syringe for your uh, pericardial synthesis. So, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, this is some of the quick stuff that we use. Um, you know, obviously, um, we're fortunate enough to have a, a, a relationship with the hospitals that we're in. So if we need to use an ultrasound machine or whatever, they typically will have no issues with us using those kinds of things. But otherwise, we have most of the equipment that we need to do our job. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, if you guys have any questions about running critical care or what it takes to, to be on a unit like this, please reach out, talk to me. I am happy to help. Uh, I am all about helping others progress, and I'm all about progressing myself. So, um, at any rate, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for seeing uh, basically my workspace, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day.